Hi there, it's Jordan Von Haslow. Yes, that Jordan Von Haslow. I don't know if you know this, but everyone's favorite radio show and podcast is now available on Spotify. That's right. Showtime with Jordan Von Haslow and Friends, my weekly one-on-one -on -one chat with some of the most interesting people I know in entertainment and the arts can now be streamed on Spotify. Uh-huh. I share real estate with Joe Rogan. Click on the link and be sure to subscribe. And don't miss us live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. Let's get on with the show. Hi there, it's me, Jordan Van Haslow. Welcome to Jordan Van Haslow and Friends live on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. Let's get on with the show. All right, today I have a brand new friend. I'm chatting with a brand new friend, actually two brand new friends. And I'm so excited that, that my buddy, Chris Garcia, who works with uh, Dale Hindman, who actually we had a conversation with a couple of episodes ago, uh, introduced me to. She is amazing, actually. She's prolific. She's a comedian. She's a musician. She's a fashionista. And now she's a game show host. The uh, inimitable Devin Green. Well, hello, Devin Green. <laughs> well, hello. Oh my God. And Chris Garcia is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest understatement of 2020. <laughs> it's so <laughs> sweet that he hour. connected <laughs> us. He's, he's an absolute sweet. It's so great that he connected us. And I also have the co-creator um, of Versus the Game Show, Ned Douglas here. Hello. Hi, Ned. I'm so glad to meet you. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So I want to hear all about you guys and, and, and where you guys have been. But like, I don't even know where to begin. Like, so since Chris introduced us, I've kind of fallen into this Devin Green hole, kind of like a Wikipedia hole where you start one thing and then you go to one thing and you go to one thing. And it's like, I don't even know where I began first. I find it really amazing, actually, right? Because this year has been a year of like, just craziness for everyone who works in the business. And a lot of people had things going on that all of a sudden stopped and have been spending the last nine months kind of just trying to, you know, get their head in the right space and figure out what to do. But it seems like you haven't stopped. You just released a new song, right? California Christmas. And now you just uh, began uh, hosting a new game show on Reverie, which is new to me. Reverie is an online streaming, whether they're the first uh, streaming service that features nothing but queer programming, right? And they're on demand and they're also um, linear on Pluto TV among other, uh, among other services. Like, so did you stop at all? Like when pandemic happened or? Uh, Jordan, you like we like to put out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, what you heart. know, every single, we, we perform live all over the world with the best drag queens in the entire world. And every single show got canceled for 2020. And then we were rebooking everything for 2021. That all got canceled. So you have to pivot, pivot, pivot. And it was the great reshuffling. And because Ned and I both, it's, it's all the same to us. It's just creation, you know, and it's usually, um, lighthearted or you know more gentler natured and that's where versus came from it was all shot um st at stay at home so we had to figure out how to write it shoot it edit it and we did the wall-to-wall -wall music of it as well yeah, oh we just wow for permission really yeah. to start doing something we just figured, <laughs> just let's do make it. a game show that'll be fun <laughs> No, yeah, no one was, asked for it. Nobody <laughs> asked for it at all. You know, during these times, Jordan, you have to, you know, uh, just to have like five minutes, just to just a moment to to breathe and and just to have a laugh and a smile again. Absolutely. And a Absolutely. stupid laugh and an idiotic smile. Because <laughs> if you're there counting kittens or counting carrots or asking about bunny poo. Yeah, and, and, which is, as, as I, I had no idea. What I love is that it's inter, it's informational or, or inter, inter, inter informational, right? Because I, I, I didn't had no idea that bunnies eat their own poop. Until, <laughs> oh, they do. I, <laughs> well, the fun part for us was doing the deep dive, like going into MySpace and LinkedIn and IMDB for the social media questions for the contestants which is one portion of versus the game show, because I looked at my own and I was like, oh my God, I've posted 13,000 things on Twitter. What am I, what do I do all day? 
It seems like I post. <laughs> how, how did the show, so the show came about after we were, everything was in lockdown or was this something that was kind of in the works beforehand and lockdown kind of facilitated it because you had nothing but time because, you know, the shows got canceled. We had done two Apple apps, which turned out fantastic. They were based on my welcome to my home videos and just idiotic things. And then we did a, a just a, a queer friendly, person of color friendly, charming book. Uh, it's a coffee table book called Everyone Fuck Off. And it was, it was so loving and so warm that we thought we would extend <laughs> what we were doing. Uh, you know, Ned does major music for film and TV, and we have our own projects together. And this was the culmination of the comedy and music in one tasty bite. But it was right in the yeah. middle of lockdown. I mean, we, yep. we just, we, we got some friends in to shoot a pilot with and Oh, you may know them, Jordan, Tom Goss Music, Tom Goss and Franz Zoni. We had them do the pilot and that was like 21 minutes. We went oh to referee goodness. and they said, perfect. We love everything. Can you do it in five? And what did we say, Ned? <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> Well, that's the key, right? Just yes, right? Yes. And oh, then absolutely. Figure, and, yeah. and then figure out how, how to actually execute it. <laughs> well, that was the other thing. You know, we're both pretty handy and pretty crafty editing and, and sort of just doing our own thing. But Ned really hit on it. We know we never ask for permission to create. And you as an artist absolutely know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so as of yesterday, um, so there are four episodes premiered. So is it coming out a new episode or, or is it coming out, you know, four episodes at a time and what day does it come out? Well, is it on the linear broadcast? I really think that you should have a conversation with Reverie and demand more episodes. <laughs> start us, start an online petition, a change.org petition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We have lots more, you know, it, it was so crazy during lockdown. Instead of doing our live shows, Ned and I do a live um, music show every single Friday because a lot of people, as you well know, performers and likewise are, they have no jobs to go back to. They yeah. are, uh, they are in lockdown alone. And we just were here to keep people company and entertained. We have very few skills other than that. But if you need a laugh and would like some company, just, you know, so you're not alone. We're here yeah. to emotionally look after you and um, have some songs and some laughter. Oh my God, I feel so comforted already. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here. I wish I had a bosom <laughs> to put your head into, but I'm literally an A cup. <laughs> well, good things come in small packages. Thank so you. Or you put them both in your mouth at the same time. <laughs> how did you how did you guys start coming together? Because you know, if 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 someone is uninitiated and kind of just looked at your backgrounds, you come out of comedy and out of improv and out of stand-up, and then we look at Ned's musical background and he's worked with everyone uh, D D Celine Dion uh, of course the Eurythmics um, you know so you, so if you look at your backgrounds not knowing you know really you know not being initiated into what you guys do it almost seems like you guys are on two totally different lanes but, how you did know, you guys Devin's a, Devin's a great musician as well she plays ukulele beautifully and sings beautifully and we met in the studio uh, initially I was producing some work for Franzoni who's who's again a fabulous musician as well as a photographer and she came in to play ukulele and we just kind of hit it off immediately I think you know, we do come from different schools, but we share this kind of common ground in comedy and and what we find interesting and entertaining. Yeah, and we yeah. actually have the same work ethic as well. And that's a huge one. It's difficult That's a to huge work with, important yeah, for partners. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to work with someone who would like, as an example, would want to do something at the last minute as opposed to doing something every day. And, you know, we're both from... Uh, Queen's monarchy. I'm originally from Canada. And as you can tell, Ned is from the UK. And so our nature is a, is a, just a gentler nature and more absurdist comedy. The comedy is not mean spirited. And yeah. in the show, when you watch the episodes, you'll see it's not really about us. It's about illuminating the contestants, bringing out the best in them. 
because they walked in having no clue what in hell was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what's your process? You guys, like, as you guys come up with things, is it just kind of like a brainstorming? Like you might text each other, like, Oh my God, I got this amazing idea. Or do you guys, are you guys more methodical than that? And you guys have like, these are the 20 things that we're working on and developing. How, how do you guys, What's your process? Well, we always have quite a lot of stuff ready to go, but uh, you know, we like to be able to turn things around really quickly because we have the facilities to do everything at home. We have a great studio set up where we can shoot green screen and record. So, you know, a lot of the time we'll just have an idea in the morning and by the evening it's kind of done. And we love to be able to work like that. It's brilliant. You know, an idea for a song or an idea for a show, we can just kind of dive right in and do it. And then there are the sort of the longer term things that we keep coming back to and, uh, you know, but there's always at least three or four things on the table. Right. And uh, sometimes, you know, we always, for, especially for comedy, uh, I just don't shit the stuff out. I have to sleep on it overnight. And yeah. if it makes me laugh in the morning, then we keep it. And if not, we destroy it. You can't put a, you know, a Band-Aid um, on a bad a idea. Yeah, it's still going to smell. <laughs> oh my God, that is the worst thing I have ever come up with. <laughs> hey, Jordan. Yeah. I'd like, we'd like to sing with you one day. Would you like to do that? Oh my God, I'd love to. Yeah. That'd be great. I, would, I think that'd that be would really be, great. That would be a blast. I'm totally down. And I'm actually also thinking, are you guys, do you guys know Jesse Payo? She's a vocalist and a musician who was based in Los Angeles until about three or four months ago. And she's actually um, in Palm Springs now, where you guys the are. Best people are. Oh my goodness. You guys, you need to check, check her out. I want to introduce you guys, because I think that you guys, like just in terms of just your, your comedic style and such, she's a musician and a, a, a comedic actress. I think that you guys would play really well together. Well, I want I want to introduce you guys. After how is Palm Springs by the way? So I was in I think as I was telling you earlier, I um after Vegas, you know, after the show in Vegas shut down and I and lockdown happened, I was stuck in Vegas and then the you know, the mayor and the city were like, "We're opening Vegas big." And I'm like, "Well, I'm leaving town now." And I didn't know if I wanted to go back to Los Angeles or if I wanted to go to New York, but you know, like the whole corona was still, you know, at its peak, so I said I'll split the difference and I rented a house in Palm Springs. So I was in Palm Springs, I want to say from like June until October, the hottest summer of oh. my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I, we literally just moved here and we moved here just as the weather started cooling down. So we've oh, had a really nice. nice time. We go outside and there's beautiful sunshine, but it's not, you know, it's not 110 degrees, which is quite nice. No, totally. But I found I found the um, it was nice to be out of out of a city, right? Because it's yep. quiet. You go walking or jogging or whatever during the day. There's no one out, so so you can really just kind of be in your own head and and kind of you know meditate or you know whatever you do, whatever your process is. But what I found was just the environment was so inspiring. I mean, like the houses were so beautiful. It's I oh, mean, it's you know, it, I mean, yeah. it's it's like stepping into 1965 and I just think it's so wonderful. How, have, how have you guys been spending your days in Palm Springs since you've, since you've been there? We've been doing a lot on the house and we've been doing a lot of work as well. I mean, we just dived straight in. It was really hard to do a move because we had to kind of like schedule, you know, three or four days where we actually weren't doing anything other than physically moving. And so we just kind of dive straight back into work, but we, we love it. We wake up every day and there's a beautiful mountain view and the sun's shining and, you know, it's peace and quiet. We think it's great. Yeah. yeah I, I love mid-century modern. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is well, the place to be if that's a jam. Totally is. It's so interesting how so many people are um, moving, right? Like, I feel like so many people I know from Los Angeles are relocating to Palm Springs. I just got back to New York and I feel like everybody I knew in New York is now moving to Los Angeles. I feel like yeah. we're having this huge shift. Um, and I think it'll be really interesting creatively because I feel like <laughs> all of these LA people are moving in mass to this new destination and all these New York people are moving in mass to this other new destination i feel like there's going to be some really interesting uh creativity that, that yeah that new community is springing up and, and everyone realizing they don't have to sort of sit in traffic and and do the kind of the rat race thing in the same way 
when you can do an awful lot from home. I mean, I think things are never going to quite go back the way they were. And that's yeah. probably for the better. Totally, totally. How, how long were you two in uh, Los Angeles? Oh, yes, I, I was there for, yeah, well over a decade. And, and I love Los Angeles. I think it's great. Yeah, it's it's super great. Could we ever afford a home, though? <laughs> no. You know, it's, it's just, if we're going to be in another lockdown, it's just good to have some some space. space. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice to be able to go outside, have a backyard, if you have a pool. It's just nice. Or, again, just to be able to walk outside on the street and know that there's not going to be anybody else on the sidewalk coughing on you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> So what do you guys have planned next? What do you guys, so you've, you've launched Versus, you have your new song, California Christmas, which is a great tune, by the way. We've been thank jamming so to it much. for the last 24 hours. Um, uh, thank you. We have some holiday songs coming up. Every Friday we have our uh, live music show. We have some online bingo if you want to join us on Wednesdays. I can send you a private link. And literally every single day is different. It may be, as an example, one day we had, can you read a 12-minute a poem with an English accent? And can you lip sync? Uh, because <laughs> Katya, can you, can you lip sync to a video of Katya's? Uh -huh. like, yeah, of course. This is a typical day. <laughs> okay. I love it. I, I, for some reason, I'm envisioning your, your new place to be like a, a 21st century version of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Like that's just kind of what I yeah, what it it is. feels like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you'll certainly sorry, find it. out soon enough. <laughs> Indeed. So what, in, what inspires you guys? I mean, you guys are very creative and you guys are always, do you guys listen to a lot of music and do you guys watch a lot of comedy? Do you guys watch a lot of movies? Like where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, I try not to listen to anybody. <laughs> 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 I just see things. I hear things. I like to do voiceovers. When I see something, it's like catnip to me. I'll immediately act on it. If For me personally, if I have to massage it too much, then it feels like there's too much. There's something about that X factor. Yeah. You've been excited about the kernel of an idea, just yeah. going like, oh, that's great. And you know you can build on it. And you know that if you give it the right attention, it can grow into something really exciting and different and new. And it's being able to spot that little, that just that fleeting moment of inspiration that, that you know, trying to hang on to that is actually half the fun, really, isn't it? At the beginning of any project. Yeah, totally. I really like to uh, finger the zeitgeist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> oh, is there anything that you guys like, I mean, you have like kind of like this brand in terms of your brand of comedy and, and, and kind of what you do. Is there anything that, that really um, doesn't interest you? I mean, again, you guys seem like very yeah, mean curious folks. Yeah, mean-spirited or it, it's really the motivation behind it. You know, yeah. because people, comedy is such a, a widespread, but when there's, a, when there's a lot of anger behind it, it takes the comedy away. And for me, I, I like to go to people's motivation. If they're not, yeah. you know, the, we try not to open ourselves up to too, mis too much misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. And if we do, it would be inadvertent because it would gut me if I, if I hurt someone's feelings intentionally. And we try not to um, put, we, we try not to be, too pointed with anyone who who can't really take it you know what i mean it's, it's absolutely just a convivial moment that we're having and it's you know it's it's a brutal time out there where everything must be examined now and, and scrutinized and looked at and what is the motivation behind it you know so yeah. it, sometimes people just need a moment of education but also also People need a moment of grace to go, oh, I see, I, I need to make an adjustment here. Right, absolutely. As opposed so to canceling them or you know, <laughs> giving them death threats. Totally. Well, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I was actually just thinking 
uh, that earlier, you know, we on, on our uh, Instagram, you know, we have just kind of like this running thing where we post really funny, you know, talk show clips, you know, from talk show, you know, Joan, Johnny Carson, what, you know, whatever. And so I'm always looking at new clips and looking at interviews of folks. And I was thinking how the idea of like mean spirited comedy really is kind of like passe at the moment. And, you know, just, I think post Me Too, post Black Lives Matter, post pandemic. And the, what got me to realize that was that one of my favorite comedians in the world is Joan Rivers. And I always thought she was so funny. And I found this interesting clip of when she was hosting, I don't know if it was her own show or if it was she was hosting The Tonight Show, but Oprah Winfrey was her guest. And, um, uh, you know, I guess she was, it was like when the Oprah Winfrey show first, you know, went national. And Joan went on this diatribe about how Oprah needed to lose weight. And it was just so funny to me because, you know, I can imagine four years ago, that would have been the most hilarious thing in the world. But through today's lens, it seems so, as you said, oh, yeah. mean spirited. And it's like, oh my goodness, this would totally never fly. Uh, you know, now. And, and I feel like that must be an interesting um, uh, uh, tightrope to walk as a, as a, as a comedian, as, uh, you know, as a lyricist who write, as lyricists who write humorous lyrics. Do you like, do you think about how evergreen the content is going to be or, oh, wow, this is really great or hilarious or on point now, but guess what? In five years, someone is going to have a game show and pull up this Twitter, <laughs> the tweet that I sent out and it's not going to age well. Well, it was very interesting uh, because one of the, you know, we were mentioning one of the big points um, of versus the game show was going back through people's social media, you know, going back to MySpace and some of the first tweets they might have done or what, what things they have on YouTube from 2007 and just seeing how things have changed. I know for myself, one of the first videos I ever did was nine minutes. I would never be <laughs> doing a nine minute video I can now, imagine, yeah. <laughs> you know? So just being mindful, just being mindful. I think, yeah. um, you know, I don't, I certainly don't have the answers. I am absolutely not the right person uh, to, <laughs> to, to have a voice in it. It's just to, um, add exposure and, and add to the conversation in a more positive way to, to find solutions and move forward together. You know, mm -hmm. we've always just been um, queer friendly, gay friendly advocates and equality advocates. And so it was never, there was always something that really bothered me when people said it would, they would say, it, it, it always felt like a tolerance we have to tolerate it and i was right. like, well that seems ludicrous it should be a hundred percent acceptance always yeah and so that if that that's always our main goal always in what we do yeah oh, that makes that makes perfect sense that makes perfect sense you guys are also you know i say you're very prolific because again it's like you seem to be everywhere um, and you seem to be kind of like socially, as far as social media platforms, pretty socially agnostic. Um, is there, and this, I ask this of either of you, like, do you guys have a preference in terms of social platforms? Like I know some people, I have some friends who are like addicted to Twitter and like they live and die by their Twitter feed and reading on Twitter and posting on Twitter and engaging on Twitter. Whereas I have a lot of self-absorbed fan friends who are obsessed with their Instagram account and like posting thirst trap photos all day, every day. And what is wrong with that, Jordan? <laughs> it was just an observation. It wasn't a judgment. <laughs> I can't get enough. But well, I'm terrible at social media. I don't do a good job in it at all. But Devin's really great at it. So it's all it's like a full-time job. And you know, if you post the same thing everywhere, it's you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you never know what's going to take off. Who would have known that MySpace would have died off or Vine would have died off? You right. know, you know, so I guess the only thing, I don't know how you do it, but the second that a new one comes out, I just hop on, take my name just in case it does <laughs> turn out okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys TikToking? I did it for a little bit. And then I hopped out for a moment. I have to hop back in, you know, some, you just, 
you only have so many moments in a day. <laughs> totally. And like you said, it's like a full-time job. Like each of them are a full-time job. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you- it's not just the creation of the content. Then you have to go in and, you know, and you have to want to engage. Got- <laughs> exactly. Like once it's out there, you still then have additional work to do. Do you, do, how often do you, do you post? Like, do you make a, 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 a point to kind of like post on every thing every day or do you is it more just kind of like oh I feel like I have something to put out or I feel like I have something to say yes. so today is going to be that day yeah I don't I don't put myself on a schedule I, I honestly feel that when I have something to say I'll say it and it could be um reading an inappropriate quote from a book that <laughs> seems like something that should go in on Instagram story and a lovely photo should go on an Instagram main thing you know, right. but it was a really weird thing, Jordan, because I work with some of the best hair and makeup people in the entire world. I work with the best photographers in the entire world. You know what my number one photo is? What? When I poked some spaghetti through a hot dog and I cooked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's oh the goodness. internet. That. <laughs> Yowzer. That's the thing, right? You never quite know what's going to hit or what's going to, how do you find, and I'm, I'm, I'm at, I'm curious about this because I've been trying to get my Instagram like, or just my social game up. Cause I'm, I'm kind of like you, Ned, like where it's just like, yeah, I don't, you know? Yep. And so I'm always asking people who I see are successful in social media, like kind of just like what they do and how they go about their best practices and such. What, what do you find? Cause you know, now we're in a place where you absolutely have to, have a social media presence and 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 have engaged followers and that's like the first question anyone asks you like I talk to friends of mine who are on Broadway and like they say that's a question like they go to auditions for you know theater shows and like one of the first questions they're asked is how many followers do you have on Instagram do you yeah. it's, it's so nuts and, and I but I almost kind of feel like the whole like the, the content production and distribution and then the social media while they intrinsically seem like they feed into each other I almost feel like they're almost kind of like two separate things and like you know like I see people who are like you know, really successful and really engaged and have really engaging uh, followers on say TikTok, but no one's really engaging with them on Instagram. And then they also produce music or content and none of those people are kind of moving over to, you know, their actual art. Like, do you, have you found like a, a formula or, or like a way of kind of taking yeah. that engaged audience and, and making them buy stuff? <laughs> Well, that's a great, that is the question of the internet, because obviously, as Ned knows best, the music industry has completely changed from, you know, I got to get signed with a label to anybody can do music anywhere. Anybody can shoot anything anywhere. But you've also then got to be the label and be the manager and be the PR company yourself. And yeah, and and, and find the money to market it. Generally get into music (laughs) because they don't want to be those things. Yeah, right. You have to be all the all in one. And sometimes uh, I don't know how you feel about it, Jordan, but sometimes I just want to eat a meal. I don't want to have to go <laughs> buy the grocery, set the table, cook it, Chop and then the do the vegetables dish. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yep. Sometimes I just want to eat it. But it's very as an example, I, you know, so I learned how to shoot and edit on green screen. So that means uh, because it changes how I shoot because I know what I can edit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's been very helpful in, in knowing I, but I, you know, I do feel that if you are famous or have some following, you should have a skill or a talent. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's a lot of really talented people that no one will ever, ever see. And the X factor, I believe, should probably have something to do with authenticity that really came from you as opposed to regurgitating other people's stuff. Totally, totally. I agree wholeheartedly. It's so funny. I talked to some of my friends about this and just how, you know, beginning... I really want to say it really started happening like 2002 and that's like, you know, like when, when streaming kind of became a thing and mm-hmm. soon after how just the entire, like everything that you were taught, like, you know, I went to music school and I went to an arts high school 
And when I went to school, you know, everyone was taught, all right, so you get out of school, you move to New York, you do some theater, hopefully hop on a soap. Then once you get a little nerve, maybe do Broadway, then you move out West to LA, get some prime time, you know, uh, 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 get some prime time, you know, episodic Credits. work under yep. your belt, then move into film and win an Oscar. And now, <laughs> simple, that, that whole, but you know, but now that whole paradigm like doesn't even matter anymore. Like, you I mean TV shows? I was watching, what was I watching? I'm a big TV aholic, by the way, but I was watching, um, I was watching a couple of new shows that are on HBO now. I was watching this new show called Industry. And then I just watched The Undoing, which was the new show with Hugh Grant and, and right. Nicole oh, Kidman. Yeah. It good, Kidman. And it was just so funny because, you know, like I'm texting people like, oh, have you seen this show Industry? And they're like, nope, never heard of it. And I just thought it was so funny because I remember, you know, 15 years ago, if a new show came out on HBO, it was like, a, the cultural guy, it was a part of the cultural zeitgeist right. in a major way. And so now like even being on like a, say booking or getting cast on a show on CBS is like, mm. Yeah, it's many, really just TikTok all content. It, it's just content. It doesn't matter where, where it goes, like it's format, it's just content, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, as an example, you can fight me on this, Jordan, but <laughs> I think that- Let me get my Vaseline, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think like music from the eighties is so beloved because there were only like three radio stations and you would listen to Cyndi Lauper and then Metallica and then Brian Adams. So everybody knew about it and there would be a water cooler moment. Everybody mm -hmm. was- everybody was into the same social streams. Now everything is so micro pooled everywhere mm -hmm. that if you're not in that pool, it is so out of your purview, you have no, like no frame of reference for it. Totally, totally. I had, it's so funny. I had, um, when I was out in Palm Springs, a friend of mine was staying with me and his friend, came out for the weekend from Los Angeles and this kid's young like maybe 20 years old and it was so funny because every time he would like talk about something whether it was like a video or a tv show or something he would always say have you heard of x y and z and I was starting to get offended like you little shit how old do you think I am yeah. but then I realized oh wait from his perspective he always has to ask because of what you just said there's no like centralized conversation anymore no there's, so really regardless no. Of <laughs> there's not and you know the t the youth the youth of today they don't even they don't even email and they're like <laughs> email why would i use an email isn't that crazy it's Half so of them bizarre, don't, right? they, they don't even know they don't even know what like you know calligraphy is <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think that they teach like cursive anymore in school or, or any of that. It's so it's so strange, and I guess it's so strange because it happens so quickly. Yeah, yeah, it did. Like yeah. so, like one day you look up and it's like, oh, totally. So, do you see it as a plus or a minus, right? Because I do think it's that just go for what it. it is. It's just what it is. You have to be able to pivot. So when you get very stuck in your ways or you get stuck in a paradigm, you're going to have a hard time making a shift. You're going to want to resist everything that's coming along. You need to have a fluidity and, and go with it and bring your old school sensibilities into what's currently happening now. But it's great that yeah. everyone has access to the tools to, yep. to get on the same stage that, you know, Beyonce and, and, and the biggest musicians and comedians in the world. We all have the same tools now. And that's totally and yeah. great. And it comes down to inspiration and ideas and, and finding out who you are and what your voice is to be able to kind of have a place there. So that's really right. good, but there's just so much noise that it's incredibly difficult to yeah. cut through. That's so, a downside. Totally. Yeah. What do you have to say? What do you want to say? Right, right. Well, it's, it's, it's even interesting because like you said, like level the playing field because now everyone has the technological tools to all do the same thing. But I find that this year has even leveled it even more yeah. with like broadcast, you know, the, you know, the view you know, recording from home. So now whatever you do in your garage literally yeah. looks no different than Absolutely. like a major morning talk show. Yeah. Well, you will see with Versus the Game Show, ours looks better. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Ned's floating head. Uh -huh. I think <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what the hardest like, part was of shooting that was what? to get our pussy cat <laughs> to pose. <laughs> How did you guys come up? Where did the donuts come from? Is that like a reference to something else? Like something else that, you know, from your comedy or is it just like a, we right, like well, donuts. We like donuts and I leave nothing but the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. I think you do, your, your content is so funny between that, um, uh, between America's Best Christian, I think is, absolutely hilarious do you are you working on any other like new characters or any other you know maybe like video series you know content series um is it is anything else kind of like being developed at the moment well we had um jack versus jack tries to direct Devin. betty bowers is written by uh andrew bradley and i portray betty bowers you've got to follow his twitter feed it's just fantastic it's so on point and I'm going to do that right now. What's his name again? I'm sorry. Uh, just follow Betty Bowers, but it's written oh, by Andrew okay, Bradley. It. Um, it, it's just there. It's just so savory and on point. There's just so much content on a daily basis. And with all the political things going on, honestly, how do you um, do satire of satire? <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. I, I wonder... I, I would imagine that everything that's happened in the last four years, and I would say specifically in the last year, year and a half, has to be both comedy gold, but also like, again, like you said, how do you satire satire? And what are you going to do <laughs> once this satire is ended? <laughs> the shit never ends. <laughs> <laughs> But at least it'll be calmer and, it, and hopefully people will be civil with common courtesy and manners again. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'd like to just see. That would see. be nice. Just yeah. like, just, just a calming down because it, the emotional turmoil, some people live like this all the time, drama queens, but not everybody <laughs> can. And I don't feel that it's, it's healthy to be operating. This isn't the best level to be operating at. Well, if you're always on 10, right, eventually you're just going to like crash and burn, right? You can't yeah. always be at this high intense level without ultimately having some kind of consequence for it. So, you know, I agree. Can we do a total sidebar, Jordan? Totally. Can we say how much we love Charo? Oh my God, Charo is fantastic. That's... <laughs> I got to tell you, I saw it on your feed and I was like, we have everything in common. I went to her house once. I walked oh in and she said, hola, Devin. <laughs> and I honestly, I melted. And then she played. I mean, she's a great player, right? She is. She's a fantastic. A I mean, that's her, that's her thing. And it's like so funny because no one knows it because they right. just think of her as coochie coo. But like, really, she's just a classical flamenco guitarist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like a virtuoso she is really she was breathtaking just so incredible she didn't have the chords there or the she just played from her heart it was it, i honestly breathtaking and more importantly she had a room that her chesterfield matched the carpet matched the drapes matched the pillows matched the oh it was so good <laughs> I wanted to steal something. I didn't. <laughs> how did how did that come about? I got listen. I get invited to crazy stuff. I show up. <laughs> you invite me. I'm gonna be there. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no, Charles, quite, quite, quite amazing. I love. Did you did you meet her? Was she was she in Las Vegas or was she in Los Angeles? In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Because one of the things I loved, I had never spent a lot of time in Las Vegas um, until last year when I started my run. And I loved Vegas because everyone is so social. Like I found, you know, I've lived in a lot of different cities um, for work and I've never like, like two weeks in all of a sudden I had like 75 new Facebook friends and yeah. everyone's like, come to this party. And now we're going over here and meet this person. And the crazy, just you thinking about Char, I was just thinking about some of the, crazy characters um, that I met just over the last year. And, and it makes me so happy because I think that there's, while we have so much more content now, there's not a lot of personalities, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. people don't have personality the way they used to. Who are some Charo aside, who are some of the like the the biggest personalities that you've met or worked with in your life that stand out as like, oh my God, this person was a kook and it was the most amazing thing in the world. Listen, I pl- we Ned and I play with the the greatest drag queens. Each and every one is inimitable and charming uh, in their own way. But I will tell you the one the one thing that slayed me to my boots. I was walking <laughs> in Century City. There was no one around, and Dolly Parton. She said, ah! "Hi, darling." And I got to tell you, I blushed. She was amazing. She had a fucking halo around her. <laughs> she did. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It wow. was the greatest I... moment of being in Los Angeles. I was like, I made it. She said, I got it. <laughs> yep. I'm good. I'm good I to go. I probably would have just died there yeah. in the Century City Mall. <laughs> 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 Oh my God. Well, so you've worked with a lot of people. Who would you love to work with that you haven't had an opportunity for whatever reason? Uh, I wouldn't know until they came to us because we say no to a lot of people. It just needs to be someone who's lighthearted and easygoing, someone easy to work with. Um, I, we don't like to focus on anything other than having a really great show. So we do an awful lot of shows with Varla Jean Merman. No, we love Varla. Yeah. We love Varla. You know, um, gosh, we've done Christmas shows with Jackie Beat and just all the greatest ones. Yeah. And I know that when the world opens up again, that we were, we just, we're going to have a lot more to look forward to. So always keep an eye on Devin Green, D-E-V-E-N, DevonGreen.com. And you can uh, just, you know, we have sticky fingers, our hands are in everything. (laughs) 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 Well, speaking of everything, you you know, the game show, you do, you know, music videos, you know, you do comedic monologues, you perform live. Do you have like a, a preferred medium? Like, oh, I can't wait to get back to the live shows or, oh, I really love being creative with the editing and the video shooting. And it's all this. Well, for me, I don't know about you, Ned, but for me, it's all the same. It's just Balance is great. I mean, it's really nice to be able to do a bunch of different things and and, and not get sick of any one of them. You know, we're (laughs) always excited about doing, oh, let's make a video. And and it's it's a different skill set, but it's, yeah, at its heart, it's the same It's all performance to me. Yeah, totally. It's all the exact same thing to me. So I don't say, oh my God, it's fashion, it's modeling, it's comedy. It's, It's just all performance. It's just all content that's at its heart, a comedy base. Totally. So I know, you, you know, comedy is, 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 has always been your thing. Have you ever done any like dramatic work, any dramatic the, roles or? The only as far, I'm so insincere when I talk, Jordan, it's just <laughs> for me to try acting. I would say that the most <laughs> sincere thing I've ever done where probably because I'm not talking is the California Christmas video. <laughs> That would be it. Yeah, it's true, it's true. That's like, it. Yeah. That's the only thing where I'm not being a jackass. <laughs> so, so talk to me about the California Christmas video. Like it's it's so California and you're buying it's pool. Palm Springs. It was during the I'm... fire. That's why it looks so moods. Oh, okay. So I was there during the fire. I Wait, know. Did... <laughs> we should have, we should well, we couldn't have met because we're um hypochondriacs <laughs> but that is the longest pool you've ever seen in that video yeah yeah that's how did pool. that's a pool and a half to- did somebody did you work with someone else to come up with the concept or like was it all you or what was no, the development we do that everything or so we don't get out we don't listen to anyone ever <laughs> <laughs> So what's the next, when's the next tune coming out? You said you have some more Christmas stuff happening. Oh, you- every single Monday, we're going to shit stuff out. On <laughs> Happy holiday. How no, vivid. We have like five original <laughs> songs coming out every single Monday. And then our Friday shows, 
So just keep an eye out. We're here to entertain you through the holidays, especially if you can't get together with loved ones where we are here for you emotionally, not financially. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think, I remember my friend and I did a show years ago. This is going to be like in the early 2000s at Don't Tell Mama in New York. Oh, and, yeah. and we have this British couple just randomly came to the show. And so after the show, you know, we're, you know, we're saying hello to everyone and they're like, we love you, blah, 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 blah. You're fabulous. And then the woman says, oh, if you find yourself in the UK, you must, you know, let us know. And then the husband quickly said, but you can't stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. We have to use that. <laughs> totally. The, um, so speaking of like the holidays, what do you guys, do you guys celebrate the holidays? Are you guys doing anything for Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, New Year's? Or just... I think we're going to work. I think we're actually... <laughs> Twenty fifth is on a Friday. Yeah, so we'll do a show. We'll do we'll, a morning we'll, show. We'll do our more our usual morning show online at devingreen.com. We'll do holiday songs for you. Awesome. Well, that's cool. So everyone can find you at devingreen.com. Everyone should write Reverie and demand yes. more episodes yes. of Versus. Talk to me. Tell us about yeah, your various social platforms. Where can everyone find you on social? Well, on Instagram, it's at the Devin Green, D E V E N, and at the Ned Douglas. And, but just always go to devingreen.com. You can uh, find both of us there and you can always find where, uh, where we are. Perfect. Do you guys work on, like, you, you guys, you know, you work on, on all, a lot of all these projects together. Do you guys still do things separately or work on other side yeah, things? Ned aside? Works, yeah, Ned has, um, animation and he does music scores for film tv and animation oh how fun that's cool what I are you working on now he's super talented mm. yeah tell us more about that ned uh well, just ryan's want to know finishing up a independent movie called the faulkner at the moment which i'm mixing and uh it's been going on for a while it's great it's set in oman in the middle east um it's kind of a an interesting drama and then, well, there's a couple of projects that I kind of little secret yeah, projects, NDS. some technology, music related technology projects that I can't really talk about. Um, and then I've been mixing songs for Tom Goss as well, who, who's fantastic and we play live with a lot. Um, yeah. And Franzoni released stuff and Franzoni, we co wrote yeah. and played on all of his stuff. Ned produced his songs and, and it's f-r-a-n-z-s-z-o-n-y you've never seen an instagram like this before yeah. hashtag fact <laughs> <laughs> oh we're gonna have to check it out totally oh he's wonderful it's yeah wonderful. he's really great yeah yeah cool so what do you guys have planned for the rest of the day we're just gonna go over your uh, social media. Honestly, I fucking love your Gershwin. You just, uh, that uh, Jacob and Jordan. I, I really, uh, you just have a great voice. Period. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That makes yeah. me so happy. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. We can't wait to sing with you or play with you. Neither can I. I'm always down. Lord knows now I have lots and lots of time on my hands. <laughs> so. Well, when the world opens up, we are here for you. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you guys came in for this chat. I, I really, really enjoyed getting better acquainted with you. And I can't wait to, to chat with you both again. Oh, thank you so Wonderful. much. <laughs> Happy holidays and please uh, stay safe as you can, dear. Absolutely. California Christmas Just the best time of the year I may be down and broke But I've still got hope For a new next year California Christmas
Hi there, it's Jordan Van Haslow. Thanks for listening. I hope you had as much fun as we did today. Before you go, be sure to like today's conversation and subscribe so you never miss another. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at at Showtime with Jordan for breaking news and unaired behind the scenes. And don't miss us live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. See you next time for another Showtime with Jordan Van Haslow and Friends.